introduction to the student from NUSI. So if you recall last year, right, he actually spoke about the Intel Edison flight controller. He and Ambrose are the two people involved in the project. So this time he talked about something different. It's not an ordinary school project, it's actually a nano satellite. Okay, so now I'll hand it to him. Yeah. Okay, uh, so basically uh, this project arm set. So there is this uh, NUS module called EG1310, which is Introductory Satellite Design. And in that module, your final module project is to create a uh, kind of a nano satellite that will, that will launch um, into high altitude using a weather balloon. So this is um, my, my project basically for that module. And so we really took it over the top of this one. So let me just give you an overview of the module there. You're supposed to use two Arduinos, one uh, on the balloon satellite itself and one on the ground station. And you're supposed to use an XB to transfer information between the uh, satellite and the ground station. And then the ground station has to display your telemetry information on the LCD and also have a camera transmitting video feedback to a computer. And you also need to have a pen tilt system for the camera so you can look around on the satellite. So like the sensors on the board, on board are pro something like uh, humidity sensors, temperature sensors, and there's also a magnetometer. So our implementation takes it to like the next level. So I'll explain it as it goes along. So the goals of my project was to um, stream video and telemetry, obviously, uh, and um, be able to fly. The ground station has to be able to display the video and telemetry, and there's also obviously needs to be a joystick to control the pan and tilt system. And we wanted to have uh, the most kind of the best uh, ground station that the module has ever seen. So what we did was we actually created an app for the entire thing that runs on a desktop. So we will see more about that later. And so the app has to be very user friendly and easy to use. So general specifications are that uh, you're constrained to one kilogram uh, and you have to be 15 by 15 by 15. So that's the max specification. So um, ours is actually quite a bit smaller than that. And our battery life expectations were about 88 minutes or so. So uh, we had to measure pressure, temperature, humidity, heading, dust concentration, and we had to monitor our voltage and current to make sure that the voltage doesn't drop. And the dust concentration and voltage and current was actually optional, but we added it in. Okay, so for the balloon satellite, our mechanical design was actually quite simplistic. Um, it's basically a box with a pen tilt system connected at the bottom there. And the pen tilt system uses two 9 gram servos, and the box has a bunch of ventilation holes. So the design considerations for that were mainly ventilation, the placement of the dust sensor itself, the pen tilt system, the attachment for the uh, pen tilt, and a magnetic door latch so you can easily debug uh, your boards when something happens. So for ventilation, there are a few holes um, placed here, and there's also a hole at the back. For dust sensor, we actually had to 3D print a case because it has, you can't put it inside the box because you have to be exposed to the wind to see what is in the atmosphere. For the pen tilt system, uh, it's, um, pretty simple, two 9 gram servos with a tiny TX04 5.8 gigahertz camera. And both servos are, there's, there's a 3D protect case for all of them as well. And for the top plates, basically to attach your, your satellite to the balloon, you need some attachment points. So this, we just used a ring and, uh, and bolted it down. And then for the magnetic door latch, um, yeah, as I said, it's just to make it easier to debug. So it's meant to be slightly bigger than what we currently have inside. The electronics inside actually like only take up only take about half the size of the entire thing. So we can allow for expandable like shields they put on top. And also because it's lightweight, it's one of the lightest um, nano set that we had in the project because how compact because how compact the electronics were, as you'll see later. So okay, this this uh, where it starts to get slightly interesting. So we only had to use an 8-bit Arduino, but then you know uh, we went to for a 32-bit STM32 microcontroller because I like to code an embedded C more than I like to code an Arduino, <laughs> uh, and also because it's cheaper than an 80 mega uh, uh, Arduino mega. Arduino mega is like fifty dollars. STM32 Nucleo is like fifteen. So you see the huge price difference there, and you also get more control, um, especially when you're coding an embedded C as compared to when you're coding in the Arduino framework. But it comes with its own share of problems. You obviously have to do more work because there's complete lack of libraries and there is community support, but like you, don't, you can't just install the MPU 9 to 5 library and have everything work magically. You have to write your drivers almost from scratch. And also, we had to have data logging as part of our uh, balloon satellite project, but for some reason in our implementation, the FATFS didn't work. So we had to do something, uh, but we had to put uh, Arduino anyway on board because we didn't even have an SD card working. So that was one of the huge problems that we had. <laughs> So these are just electrical specifications of our sensors and whatnot. And this is a simple system architecture. You can see the nucleus up there, and then there is a whole bunch of um, 
random sensors here connected to the ADC, random sensors here connected to I squared C, and those two are primary interfaces. And you are close to the Arduino field, which basically only does data logging at this point. There is no other use for that field. And that was actually removed in the final launch as well because our app could do data logging. Okay, uh, so this is, we designed it in Fritzing, and then we uh, just um, put it on the board. And it is this, it's basically a shield, so it's only one single protobot on top. So for the hardware design, it's a shield, so it's very modular. And okay, this is where um, we talk about the app. Uh, this the ground station, sorry. So the ground station part uh, basically is supposed to be very minimalistic. So because most of the control is supposed to be done through the app itself and not through this tiny thing. So this is simply to fulfill the requirements of the module to have a ground station. But other than that, we basically didn't use this at all. It was only has an XB receiver that's connected to your computer. Yeah. So this thing, you can see uh, the ground station also has a nucleo. Uh, it has an LCD display as a keypad to like switch between your display, like to display uh, hitting and display magnetometer data. And it also has a pressure sensor. Now, this is interesting because you want to have delta H, so you want to have change in height compared to your ground station to your analysis light. Because if you just put a pressure sensor on an analysis light, you get a not relative uh, scale of height. But this one, you can compare your pressure at your ground level and with your altitude level to get your delta H. Yeah. And then you have a joystick connected to your um, ADC. And so our, our camera system is basically a 5.8 gigahertz system. It has uh, 200 milliwatts of power, so it's a huge range up to a kilometer. And so our receiver and, and, and our, our nucleus is actually connected to a USB hub, and then both of them are connected to the PC. So the camera uh, USB receiver sends video footage to the PC, while the nucleus can actually be, uh, it sends the telemetry information through UART to the PC as well. And so we can also send information from the PC to the SDM32 to control the joystick. Okay, so the firmware is based on the hardware abstraction libraries, um, and it's all mostly custom written. And so there are a few benefits compared to Arduino. Firstly, it's more interrupt driven, so that's, it's mostly asynchronous, and uh, it's gonna be more robust, especially when you code it properly as compared to the Arduino stuff. Um, and for the fuel, it basically, yeah, as I said, it's just, SD card and it locks in a CSV format so we can easily uh, do um, plotting in Excel afterwards. Uh, so the firmware flow is basically the center data is put in every 15 milliseconds and then it calculates uh, altitude heading, whatever, and then the output uh, data packets are sent to the transmitted to, to the base station every 10 milliseconds. And then uh, the data is actually, you have, there was a huge problem where we had to, you had to code the, we have to read the XP reference menu and I figure out how the packet structure goes because we are using the API mode, not the normal transparent communication mode. So we have to put everything in the frame and stuff. So that, was, that took a bit of time. And then uh, there's also uh, check some stuff as well. And the ground station code um, is also um, written in the hell and then it just does um, pen tilt, it sends the data over to the uh, satellite from the joystick and uh, yeah. Okay, so the app was meant to um, completely bypass uh, the ground station entirely. So you had to be able to send um, keyboard information to control the pen tool system. You had to be able to, um, uh, to do the, see the telemetry data and we had to be able to data log straight to the computer and we also had to be able to live plot the data. So, we, so um, basically uh, it's meant for visualization, real time analysis, uh, control the satellite and also for data logging. So this is what it looks like. It's actually written in Electron, uh, and so it runs natively, and it can be cross-compiled to any uh, most operating systems. And uh, so it looks very similar to the Clean Flight drone uh, thing because uh, the design's mostly based off of that. And so it, this one just shows heading, altitude, uh, artificial horizon, and this battery monitoring. There's actually more. So this is just raw telemetry data just coming in and being displayed here. And then this is the data logger. It just data logs to a CSV file or a JSON file, whichever you prefer. And this is the live graph graphing. So this is actually done in uh, Chart.js. So yeah. So, it's, so the benefits are that it's cross-platform, uh, it's Node.js, and it's, it uses Electron. So, and for our main three uh, software components, we use Chart.js, Bootstrap, and Serial.js. Serial.js is what allows us to interact with the Nucleo. And for the, so it's basically using some binary protocol that we invented, and then it just uh, is through Serial, and it reads the data using serial port JS, and then it passes it using buffer.js, and then uh, it's stored as some uh, a global JSON object, and then we just, um, every time the sensor comes in, updates the JSON object, and then when we want to do plotting, we just pull from the JSON object every single time. 
Okay, so um, now we can do the demo. It's, it's a video, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see, right, the video feed is actually quite clunky, and this because of the fact that uh, our video capture device that was capturing from the 500 megahertz thing was very buggy, and so it was just being terrible, but you can see the live stream is working, so it's getting data in, and data logging is also happening, and this uh, very boring live plot, but I'll show you more interesting graphs later. Yeah, uh, so the heading is uh, also like, you know, updating. The artificial horizon is not working because our IMU was not working. And the battery is messed up because we use the 2S battery instead of 3S battery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in the essence, it demonstrates the idea that it more or less works. Yeah, you can go back. Okay, so uh, this is the live for the altitude chart. It was halfway, it was when I was halfway up there. So it went up to 120 meters or so above uh, our ground level. So it's not very high, it was only like a few stories high. Yeah. And this, the, after the event, we plotted the graph from um, um, the, we plotted the graph from the uh, CSV uh, data log information and this is what we got. And this is the pressure, so it's exactly opposite. Temperature, this is actually a very, very small temperature change, so there's basically no temperature change given that it's such a low, uh, this, just a low, low height and the humidity is also effectively the same. So the conclusion is just that we managed to create uh, something that was way beyond what we required for that module, a 32-bit system with a really nice uh, desktop app that kind of unifies all the um, components and just lets it be very user-friendly and stuff. So I have a GitHub, everything is open source, so yeah. So do you have any questions? Uh, I'm not sure whether I missed it. So like, uh, just now you said the ground station, ground station is the satellite itself, but the uh, origin you expect to be to communicate. Yeah. So I'm curious, uh, between your app and uh, satellite, what, what kind of, uh, how do you communicate? So from the app, it goes through serial to the ground station, and then ground station uses XV communicate to satellite, yeah. Is this the uh, 2.4 gigahertz XV, or are we using the 900 megahertz version? We're using the 900 megahertz version, yeah. Uh, can you repeat the question? The reason you use Arduino is that because because it was because the micro the fat FS the one that allows you to uh, read the SD card in the STM32 it was not working for us we couldn't get it working by the deadline so we had to use the Arduino instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it can be replaced, but we have to get the library working. Yeah. Uh, no, the video feed is uh, true. Like there is a 5.8 gigahertz uh, trans well, camera plus a transmitter on board the thing. It goes to a receiver and outputs an RCA, and then you have to have a video capture device, and then that goes to your computer. Wow. So okay. it's a huge, complicated, completely separate thing. And then it's actually put into the app use because um, the video capture device just emulates a USB camera, so we can just pull it in uh, using uh, Node.js. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah.